Would you guys believe that the majority of my viewers are not subscribed? If you like the content, go subscribe. It just takes two seconds, and I'd really appreciate it. Also, go click the little bell icon. It's really simple, and it allows you to see any video that I've uploaded recently so you don't miss anything. Do you guys want 15% off of a Jeftron Leviathan? Go to the Jeftron website, link in the description, and use the coupon code jt ast kilo 23 15 Hey guys, welcome back. It's been a while since I did a video, I totally admit. Things like college have really, really gotten the better of me lately, and unfortunately I have to focus on that for a while. But Jeftron recently contacted me and asked if I wanted to review their somewhat recent Leviathan MOSFET. I thought, yeah, absolutely. I love reviewing these things. Internal parts, it's totally my thing. Love it. Thankfully, they did throw in some patches. They got a Jeftron patch and a Leviathan patch because I absolutely love having patches. So let's open this up real quick. This is the Bluetooth MOSFET, if you hadn't noticed already. So it does have an app you can download on your phone, which I'm really looking forward to messing with a little bit because that is kind of, I feel like, where the future of... Uh, internal MOSFETs and electronics for airsoft guns are going are Bluetooth apps, which I think are fantastic. You just pop in your phone, download a free app, and you can control your gun. It is really quite awesome. So, it's in actually a pretty solid box. Really, really appreciate that good foam packaging and everything. You get your little installation manual here. It's very detailed, and I do highly recommend you follow this to the best of your ability because there's a lot of good information here. So during my installation here, I am going to follow the uh, instructions as closely as possible so I don't uh, screw anything up, uh, of course. So continuing to open this up, you do get a sticker. Stickers are never a bad thing with Airsoft products because they're so blasted common, almost as common as patches. Um, Jefftron did ask what trigger I wanted, so I got a flat face blue uh, kind of anodized trigger here. So that's rather neat. A uh, little foam block, this is for installation. And of course the MOSFET itself, being very careful with it here. All right, before installing the MOSFET into a gearbox here, we're actually gonna look at it real quick, just for a second. The little password reset here is for the Bluetooth app. It's a little button there, so if you forget your password and you've already set one aside from the one, two, three, four it comes uh, previously set to, you can hold that inside of your gearbox after disassembling it and reset your password, so kind of neat. There's a little knob here. This is actually what's um, going to be tripped by your sector gear. Every time it goes around, there's a little cam on the bottom of the sector gear, and that is partially responsible for uh, knowing when the active braking is supposed to engage and shock control and things like that. So if you're running three round burst, your sector is going to trip this dial three times. So neat little feature there. Little fins here are for your selector plates. So if you've got, um, you run a run semi-auto, it's gonna trip one. Uh, full auto is gonna trip the second one and no selection like safe is going to uh, depress neither of those. And of course there are many, many fire modes that this model brings into, uh, into effect. And those can be programmed into either safe semi or full auto. So I recently picked up uh, yet again, another A&K SR25 and this one I got uh, second hand used. It was like 60 bucks at a swap meet and I really couldn't pass it up. It was in fairly good condition and that's like a quarter price they are retail roughly so I thought ah, what the hell I'll, I'll grab it and do some work on it and I've got it working more or less the way I, I like it. It's shooting just a hair under the FPS limit for DMRs for the local field and it's to the point where I'm like I really would like a, a MOSFET of some kind because I'm running a 7.4 it's still got a nice relatively snappy trigger response, but it can always be better. One thing I do want to mention also is that you do need to use either a, a trigger from Jefftron that's specifically designed for this or modify your existing trigger. So just keep that in mind. Some modifications may requ be required to your trigger and or the gearbox depending on what sort of gearbox you have. And just like that, I've gone ahead and dropped in the Leviathan after removing all my prior mechanical parts. I've also installed the new blue trigger, which actually looks rather nice in here. I've also got the set screw in there, so it's sitting right on the edge of that little switch there for the trigger. I've installed the screw to keep Leviathan in place, and I've also got all the wiring uh, in the channels where they belong. Keep in mind, on the other side of the gearbox, you'd probably have to sand down these pins as well to make room for all the uh, thicker wiring that's probably going to be installed in your gearbox. 
The instructions do ask that you install this small foam brick in the right side of the gearbox. It is included and has a small patch of adhesive on one side to keep it on there. It's supposed to help keep the Leviathan in place during use. But with all the uh, setup out of the way, and yes, there is some setup you should probably go through, such as checking that the uh, little cam for the sector gear is working, the trigger contact is working, everything along those lines. So I'm going to plug the battery in here. We're going to get a small beep. A little buzz there. It's just a really short one. And the gun comes standard with, obviously, your presets. Your safe doesn't work. Semi. And full auto. The Leviathan app you can download on both the iOS and Android devices, both their stores. Uh, I've already got it installed, so I've got my Bluetooth and my location turned on, which is necessary. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my Leviathan app here. This is also a Samsung Galaxy S8, so it's not the most recent device, but it still works pretty well. I've already played around with the app quite a bit and done some settings and modifications and stuff. I actually took this out to Nighthawk Airsoft and used the gun with Safe Semi and Binary, which was rather fun to do with a DMR. I use generally Semi. The binary was a little more just to test out one of the new features on the Leviathan, which was actually rather fun. So right now, since the battery is plugged in, Bluetooth is automatically turned on. You don't have to go turn it on through some other means in the, uh, in the MOSFET itself. So I'm going to select device. I've already called my gun, or this particular Leviathan Kilo 23. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to enter the 1234 password because I've not changed it. And I'm one of those guys that's like, I'll change it eventually, but probably never will. You can see the settings I've still got loaded in here from when I used this as Nighthawk yesterday. Safe, semi, and binary. Let me show those to you real quick. Safe, obviously, does not fire. Semi. Got a buzz there for some reason. And semi works great. Active braking still at 50%. Binary trigger is when you pull the trigger, it fires. When I let off the trigger, it fires. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the settings here, show you safe. Uh, we've got semi, semi burst one, binary, burst one, just straight burst one, burst one plus burst two, burst one full, and then full. Now all those burst settings, we can change the settings down here. So I've got my burst one on three, burst two on five, and burst three on seven round. So I've got a little bit of a variance in there. So if I want to have a seven round burst, I can do that. If I want to have a two burst round, two round burst I can do that or I can have a 20 round burst at the very most. That seems rather mean so I'm going to leave it on uh, just three round burst for burst one there. You do have a rate of fire control here which is rather neat so if you want to drop your rate of fire down to 75 percent give it a little less you can do that. You can only go down to 40 percent so you can't drop it too too much. Active braking comes stock at 70 percent uh, I'd drop it down to 50. Uh, that's what I used all day yesterday and I didn't have any issues with that. Uh, active braking does have to be turned on for pre-cocking to be on, so this allows the piston to spin back a little bit, or the sector gear to spin the piston back a little bit, and essentially pre-cock your piston so when you pull the trigger it's a much faster instant snap, and it's kind of a reverse of the way things normally go, so the piston's released and then it racks it back instead of racking back the piston and then releasing it. So a little bit of a different way of doing things. Uh, shot delay, you can implement that if you want to. Uh, I like spamming my trigger a little bit too much sometimes, so I'm going to keep that off. You can go all the way up to four seconds, which seems quite a bit, but some fields, some milsims, you never know, they may really require that. Uh, your fuse, you can set it up to 100 amps. And your lipos, I can monitor uh, nothing, which I think is not a great idea. Uh, I've got a 7.4 volt in here right now, so I've got it set to 7.4. You can also do an 11.1 or 14.8 monitoring, or you can monitor your LIFE batteries, which uh, is for a 9.9 .9 volt or 13.2 volt. If I go to the left panel here, the little heart-shaped symbol, I've got my selection here for my SR25. I can either delete that and create a new one. I can edit that. I'm just going to select it because I already had it set there. What I really do like about the app is it automatically sends the settings to the MOSFET without having to press a button. So if I go to semi, if I got a binary trigger on my safe setting, it'll automatically write that to the SR25 and not just wait for me to hit a button. You can see all the shots I've fired here, uh, which is a little over 1700 rounds, which like I said yesterday, I did shoot quite a bit and most of that was on semi, so I did put this thing through its paces a little bit and didn't really have any issues with it, which was fantastic. I'm going to go to my second to the right panel here, and I've got all my information here. There's quite a bit here. So my MOSFET temperature is 66 degrees right now. That is roughly room temperature. I haven't really been using it. It might heat, it'll probably heat up a little bit. My processor temp is 81 degrees. My Bluetooth signal is probably not the greatest because this building eats Bluetooth like nothing else, or signal for that matter. 
Um, my rate of fire per second is a little over 13 rounds, which seems about right for kind of a so so torque motor, a 120 spring, and a 7.4 battery. My rate of fire per minute is 800 rounds. Power up time, uh, this thing's been on for almost 26 hours because I plugged it in early yesterday to go play and haven't unplugged it since because I'm really smart. Motor start current is almost 60 amps and my semi current is 22 amps and my full auto current is just a hair under 22 amps there. So really, really close. Pre-cocking I've got turned off. Semi-cycle time is 79 milliseconds and auto cycle time is 69 milliseconds. So a little bit different there. My battery is getting pretty low. Um, it's roughly at 7.5 volts there. And it is a 2000 milliamp hour battery. I've shot 1700 rounds through it so far. So it's probably getting about the point where it needs to be charged again. My last panel here, I can reset my password. I've got my firmware version here, 121. My application version is 1.9. Hardware version two. I'm weird, I live in the US, so my temperature is set to Fahrenheit, not Celsius. Other settings here as well. You can also save a new name to your device. Your installation manual, you can look that up on the device as well, which is rather neat. And the Jeff Tron website and support. So there's quite a bit you can do with the app. I found it very easy to use and it really makes uh, setting up a MOSFET much, much easier than the traditional trigger pull, which I found extremely annoying on older models of different devices. I actually had a lot of fun reviewing and installing the Jefftron Leviathan. As best I can tell, and so far it's been really solid. I really don't have any complaints. Some things I would change though, there are some mildly, seemingly fragile components on the MOSFET itself, mainly little fins that control the uh, selection of your, your burst, your semi-auto and things along those lines. Those could be upgraded to digital components instead of little fins or switches like that. They'd be, I think, a little bit more durable and probably a little more precise as well. But those are small little nitpicky things. Right now, I don't even have 2000 rounds for this MOSFET. So durability, I can't really judge the long term. But but I do want to keep you guys as updated as possible over time. So for updates, go check my Facebook page. I'll leave a link in the description for that. I really want to thank Jeff Tron for setting this out. It was a lot of fun to review. Thank you guys so much for letting me check one out. I'm Prodigy from Airsoft Team Kilo 2-3 guys, and I will catch you in the next review. Thanks for watching.